gold. Scientists studying the atmosphere in Antarctica have discovered an extraordinary thing in a continent full of extraordinary things. Antarctica's only active volcano, Mount Erebus, is shooting pure gold into the atmosphere every time it erupts. Mount Erebus does not produce very much gold. There are no 24 karat lava flows condensing into the sea, no airborne ingots crashing to earth, not even a rain of nuggets. Instead, Mount Erebus gently perfumes the ash of its eruptions with microscopic crystals of gold, a kind of 24 karat aerosol. This is not enough to call bullion, but it is pure gold. The scientists who discovered gold in the volcanic exhaust of Mount Erebus went to Antarctica to study the hole in the ozone. As with so many scientific discoveries, discovering gold was a serendipitous accident. Accident or not, the scientists expect that their discovery will be extremely valuable because no other volcano contains gold in its ash. Following the path of gases emitted from this Antarctic peak will now be all the easier as the microscopic gold crystals can be seen as the signature of Mount Erebus. I think there's a lesson here because only scientists would attach such a high value to such minuscule amounts of gold. There is nowhere near enough gold in Mount Erebus to interest people who work in the precious metals market, for example. A gold trader would value the discovery according to the fair market value, which in this case is practically nil. Mount Erebus may be spewing gold, but we can all rest assured that the price of gold will remain unaffected and will not be devalued in any way. And yet, scientists hail the discovery as practically invaluable. Instead of fair market value, scientists value the microscopic gold crystals for their considerable symbolic worth. They know that whenever these crystals are detected in clouds or haze, scientists can confirm the presence of emissions from this particular volcano and can then accurately track their progress. This is important because scientists suspect volcanic emissions themselves may play a part in ozone deterioration. There's a surprising similarity between the symbolic value a scientist attaches to clouds of microscopic gold coming out of a volcano and the value the rest of humanity has attached to gold since its discovery. Gold occupies a privileged place for us, and much of gold's value stems from what gold symbolizes to people. Gold has an invisible attraction. What gold represents seems to be as important as what it is physically. And gold has several interesting physical properties, not the least of which is that it is incorruptible, a bona fide miracle by any standard. Copper coins fished from the sea, if they've been there long enough, become brittle cake-like masses that break apart easily in the hands. Silver stains and turns pitch black. But even after a thousand years in the drink, gold coins will look as bright as the day they were minted. Gold is able to ward off the ravages of time, a trick most of us deteriorating humans would love to learn how to do. Gold has traditionally been regarded as immortal because it doesn't deteriorate and rapidly became a symbol of perfection for millions of people who aspired to the rarefied heights of incorruptibility. When the medieval alchemists talked about transmuting base metals into gold, they weren't trying to get rich quick by turning lead into a more saleable commodity. They were talking about transmuting a base human mind into something divine, something that couldn't die, something that was metaphorically like gold. But even people who are motivated by more mundane interests, common greed, for example, value gold as if it were at the very least economically immortal. People who are motivated by nothing more than sheer personal gain know that because of its physical properties, gold won't change in value as quickly as other forms of wealth. Paper money will rot in a wet basement in a matter of weeks. Equity in a house can be ruined if the house is destroyed by fire or earthquake or storm. Purely abstract wealth is particularly vulnerable to decay. Wealth in bank accounts or shares in a corporation can become worthless if the bank folds or the company collapses or the stock market takes a turn for the worse. Gold may vary greatly in price, that is, in what is worth relative to other things, but everyone knows that gold will retain a particular intrinsic value, even if the entire credit system were to collapse. You would have to physically alter the gold to lower its intrinsic value, and that's difficult to do chemically, even if you wanted to. Someone, somewhere, will always be prepared to exchange certain things he or she owns for a certain amount of gold. And I've always thought that curious. Why do so many people accept gold as fundamentally valuable? Surely life would go on just fine if gold didn't even exist.